Welcome everybody to this video which is all about photographing birds in flight and specifically how to get the correct exposure when you're photographing birds against the sky. When you're photographing against the sky, that sky is going to influence your camera's meter and it can often lead to underexposure. So that's a common problem, is underexposed pictures of birds against the sky. Now I'm going to demonstrate this with the vlogging camera very, very simply. And you'll see it's on a kind of semi-automatic exposure at the moment. So as I point towards the sky, you can see that the image starts to go darker. There's so much more light there, the camera thinks it doesn't need as much light. So what it does is actually reduce the exposure making it look a little bit too dark quite often you will need to add a bit of overexposure but it's not necessarily the case all the time and the sky can vary the sky can vary massively just like the light can on any given day uh, you may be shooting towards the horizon of the sky you may be shooting more to the deep blue maybe directly above you what we call the zenith maybe you're shooting with the sun behind you or at an angle more perpendicular to the sun for example uh, the sky is always going to look different depending on where you're shooting and how bright it is is. The first situation is where you have a really nice deep blue sky. So perhaps it's winter here in the UK, uh, maybe you're shooting more with the sun behind you, that can help with the deep blues. In this case, it's fairly neutral, so your exposure meter will probably be fairly accurate. You might not need to do anything, you might be okay to just leave the exposure as it is. Now when it comes to your histogram, if you look at the histogram of your image here, uh, what you should find is a peak on the histogram um, that's quite high because the sky will probably take up quite a lot of your image. So if you look at that peak, it should be fairly obvious most of the time. Uh, in these situations, that peak on the histogram is likely to be right around the middle and that is going to be a fairly accurate exposure. In this situation, you might not need to do any exposure compensation at all. The next scenario is where the sunlight is weaker, so perhaps uh, it's just a bit more diffused, maybe there's more cloud, or perhaps you're shooting earlier or later in the day. Now in this situation the sky is going to be a bit brighter and that's going to influence the exposure meter more and it's going to cause your image to come out a little bit underexposed. Now in terms of the histogram for this kind of situation, the correct histogram I would say is where the peak of on that histogram the peak which is your sky is going to be somewhere slightly to the right it shouldn't be in the middle because that sky is lighter so for the correct exposure that peak on the histogram should be a little bit to the right and to do that to make that adjustment to get a more accurate exposure you'll need to add some plus compensation and the third situation is where the sunlight is much, much weaker, or perhaps you're shooting more to the horizon, or you might even be shooting more at an angle, say 90 degrees perpendicular to the sun. Now here, because the sky is gonna be even brighter, uh, if you look at the histogram, your peak on the histogram, the peak for that sky should be even further towards the right-hand side, and it might typically be, you know, maybe two-thirds, maybe three-quarters of the way across to the right-hand side of the histogram. And to do that, to get the correct exposure, you'll need to add even more plus compensation to brighten it up and shift that entire histogram to the right. How do we actually change the exposure? Uh, well, it's usually two ways. You should either have a plus and minus button on your camera and you'll hold that down and then use another dial to make that exposure adjustment. Or you might have a wheel on the back of the camera and you'll simply turn that round uh, to add a bit of exposure compensation. Now, how much should you add? It really depends on the situation, but I'd say photographing birds against the sky in the sunlight, uh, you're probably gonna add anything from plus two thirds of a stop all the way through to possibly plus two at the extreme end. Uh, so it really depends on how much light there is and the tone of the sky and even the bird to an extent. So when you're making that exposure adjustment to make it brighter, obviously something has to change in the camera. One of your settings has to change. So how do you know what's changing uh, when you're making that exposure adjustment? Well, if you're using a semi-automatic mode like aperture priority, then if you're using that and you add a bit of exposure compensation, then it will actually do that by changing the shutter speed. So it will slow down the shutter speed to make it brighter. If you're using shutter priority, uh, 
um, then it will, what will it do? Yeah, it'll change the aperture. If you shut a priority, it will use a wider aperture to make the image brighter. And if you're using manual with auto ISO, which is often a good idea, um, here the ISO is the variable, so it will actually change the ISO in order to make the image brighter. Just a word to mention about manual with automatic ISO, if you're using that exposure option, which I think can be a really good one, on some cameras you can't actually do exposure compensation. So you can use manual with auto ISO, but you can't make that exposure compensation adjustment to kind of override the camera. And I found this with a few clients I've worked with. So some cameras simply won't do it. So you just can't do it in that mode. If you're not sure, then try and check out the camera as much as you can. Mirrorless cameras are a real advantage when it comes to the exposure conversation and this type of work because you can actually see the histogram, usually see it live in the viewfinder. So you can look at that and get instant feedback and make your adjustments to make the image a little bit brighter as much as you think. If you are using a DSLR, then you're just going to have to either judge it as best you can a lot of that is down to experience or if you have time and the bird is constantly flying back and forth then you can take a test shot and look at the histogram on the back of the camera and then reshoot it again. If you're choosing to shoot completely manual for your birds against the sky, uh, then it can be a good idea to take a meter reading. Uh, so one technique, and I like to use this sometimes, is you take an exposure meter reading from something neutral. So whether it's green glass, whether it's green grass or deep blue sky, take a meter reading from there, get the exposure meter in the middle and then lock that in. So use a combination of all three settings that you want, lock that in and then as long as the bird is being lit in the same way, as long as it's the same lighting conditions for the bird, then your exposure should be fairly accurate. Now, if you feel that you need to add a bit of overexposure uh, manually, you could do this either by slowing the shutter speed down, by widening the aperture, or by using a higher ISO. And just to mention white birds, if you're photographing white birds against the sky and there's some sunlight, you don't want to burn out those white feathers and lose the detail. There are situations, particularly where you're shooting a white bird against a fairly deep blue sky, uh, that I would encourage you to actually underexpose. In that situation, I would add a little bit of minus compensation. Everything I've talked about so far has been in relation to evaluative metering. Uh, it could be called matrix metering. I think there's another one, I can't remember the name. But basically the camera takes everything in the viewfinder into account, tries to average it to give you what it thinks is the correct exposure. Um, now the difficulty is if you use spot metering, as I know some people out there like to do for birds in flight, if you use that it's probably linked to one focus point which means you've got to keep that one focus point on the bird. So if you lose that bird when you're tracking, which can sometimes happen, then the exposure's not coming from the bird anymore, it'd be coming from the sky behind, and it's gonna give you a different exposure. So I think it's a bit difficult. Uh, certainly when I work with people and beginners, I tend to recommend evaluative exposure rather than spot metering. Now I think, again, if you're using like a DSLR, uh, it might be more of a problem for spot metering because the tracking might not be as good, the autofocus tracking. If you're using a top of the range mirrorless camera, then the tracking might be so good that that works okay. Everything in this video so far has been assuming that you're photographing in some degree of sunlight. But what do you do on days like today where it's really cloudy, flat light? Well, this is where it becomes really, really difficult because the sun, as well as bringing out color, maybe adding a bit of sparkle, the sun also helps to illuminate the underside of the bird. And that's the problem with these, these kind of conditions. You just can't really do that. Where it's really cloudy, overcast, in that kind of grubby light sometimes, you can just end up with uh, lots of underexposed pictures, lots of shadows, and not much detail in the bird. And in these situations, the camera is actually going to underexpose even more. It's going to make it even worse, sometimes turn it almost completely into a silhouette. So really, there's not much you can do apart from add more exposure compensation. In these kind of situations, against a really white sky, then you probably need to add plus two, maybe even plus three stops uh, to see any detail in the underside of the bird. 
uh, and this can give like quite a high key effect as well sometimes so if that's something you want to try to be creative a high key image then that can work quite well now this also might be a situation where spot metering is maybe worth a try and that's because you've got such a huge contrast between the bird and the sky so it might be one where spot metering is going to work better but again it can be difficult keeping up with the bird I have made a number of videos of photographing birds in flight and you can find all of those on the specific playlist on my channel now do let me know in the comments box uh, how you photograph birds against the sky uh, do you like to use evaluative metering do you prefer spot metering do you use a semi-automatic mode or do you prefer fully manual let me know I do read all the comments on YouTube I can't reply to all of them but I do read every single comment I get on my channel I do hope this has been useful uh, if it has been please feel free to share it with other people give me a like uh, any comments in the comments box below thanks for watching I'll see you next time <laughs>